That was... That was the birth of Madam White Snake. I woke up one day and decided I would write a new American opera based on the most beloved myth in China, the 1,000-year-old legend of the White Snake. It is so important to the Chinese people that China has designated it to be an item of intangible cultural heritage. And so while our collective Chinese consciousness is imbued with this myth, it is very unknown in the West. As Kat very kindly introduced me, I was born in Singapore, grew up there, and I grew up with Madam Whitesnake. When I think of Madam Whitesnake, I think of sitting cross-legged on my grandparents' cold tile floor, feeling the cold tile against my skin, and the warmth radiating from three generations of women. Cause we crowded around the black and white TV set, mesmerized as we watched the white snake sing her heart out. Now, coincidentally, I'm born in the year of the snake. So maybe that's one of the reasons why I have always, always remembered the white snake. For those of you who don't know the story of Madam White Snake, I'm going to tell you a very short synopsis of it. She is a white snake demon who yearned to be human, to experience that most human of all emotions, love. After 1,000 years of meditation, the gods grant her wish, and she is able to transform into a beautiful woman. She meets her lover, Xu Xian. She falls in love with him, and she gets pregnant, thus violating every religious, institutional, legal, cultural, ethnic, racial, you name it, but every taboo in the so-called civilized world. We know, of course, such a love cannot be permitted to survive in our world. Her husband betrays her, and in the moment of betrayal, she transforms back into a snake. Why has Madam White Snake survived in the Chinese DNA for over 1,000 years? Because it is the most rapturous statement for individualism and humanism. Think about it. Who could be less human than a woman, a reptile, and a demon? Yet, despite these three strikes against her, the white snake triumphs by her miraculous physical transformation into a woman and her even more miraculous psychic transformation by love. My Madam White Snake was inspired by my husband Charles. He was going to be celebrating his 75th birthday, and I thought, Charles loves opera. I'll commission a short song cycle to be played and performed in our living room on his birthday. I woke up one morning, I went to my computer, and the words just poured out of me. It was effortless, exhilarating, exciting, and I couldn't wait for Charles to get up. When he got up, I thrust the draft at him, and he said, what's this? I said, your birthday present. So began an artistic collaboration that continues even today, even after his death. The song cycle became an opera, and the opera became three operas called Uroboros Trilogy. And I don't think you can see um, the logo, but Ouroboros is an ancient Greek symbol of the snake eating its tail, the eternal symbol of life, 
death and rebirth. And the three operas, which you can't see, but are inside the snake eating its tail, are Madame White Snake, Gilgamesh, and Naga. Each stands on its own artistically, but when you view them together as a trilogy, you will see that the whole is so much greater than the sum of its parts. So we sent one of the libretti, Madame White Snake, to 10 composers just to test the waters, and ultimately selected Zhou Long, who is a Chinese American composer. Understandably, he didn't want his opera performed in our living room. So in his inimitable way, Charles said, well, we have two opera companies in Boston. Why don't you call them up? So I picked up the phone, and I called Opera Boston and told the man who answered the phone that I'd like to speak to the general director about producing my new opera. <laughs> there was a dead silence. And I said, I'm not a crank call. I guarantee you, one day you're going to say to me, Cerise, you're the crank call I've waited my whole life for. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a crazy person to want to make opera. <laughs> but it takes an even crazier person to want to make opera when you don't know anything about it. <laughs> But Charles and I believe profoundly that individuals can create beauty in our world. And in fact, for those of us who can, we have a moral imperative to do so in opposition to the ugliness, cruelty, and destruction that seems to just spawn so quickly around us. It was this belief that kept us going through the hard times because one thing I have to tell you, failure for us was always a certainty. You have to wake up each morning to face failure yet another day. And you really, really, really have to believe in order to do this. In the process, we identified closely with Madame Whitesnake because she became for us a metaphor for that indomitable spirit that seizes and reaches for her dream, knowing she is defying destiny. Because when you reach for something that is impossible, you are challenging fate. You are defying, defying destiny. You are defying the odds. Madame Whitesnake was five years in the making, and we were the lucky ones. Charles said to me, Cerise, the next time you want to give me a birthday present, remind me to say no thank you. <laughs> Madame Whitesnake had its world premiere in Boston in February of 2010, and its Asia premiere was scheduled for October 2010. But in September, a month before the Asia premiere, Charles had a cardiac arrest, and we had to fly in um, an air ambulance to London for an emergency life-saving procedure not yet approved in the United States. He had one chance to live, and we seized that chance, and live he did. We returned in triumph. Charles prepared to go to Beijing for the Asia premiere. He came home from the hospital for one day. At the time, we didn't know it was going to be only a day. We thought it would be forever. I called the ambulance the next day. He died on October 25 at 4 a.m. And as I was sitting by his bedside, a friend asked me if I would be going to the Beijing premiere. My knee-jerk reaction was, are you crazy? 
of course not. Then I felt Charles pressing on my shoulder, saying, why not? There you go, Cerise, thinking too much in the box. Get out of the box. So I said, OK. I got up. I left the hospital, went to the funeral home, made his funeral arrangements, bought my ticket, packed my bed, and boarded the plane. It took 32 hours to get to Beijing. I arrived three hours before the curtain rose. It was a glorious night. And the next morning, I got on the plane, flew back to Boston for his funeral. Madam Whitesnake won the Pulitzer Prize in 2011. Ouroboros Trilogy is going to premiere in an opera marathon in September of 2016. One in the morning, then lunch, Chinese people always have to eat. One in the afternoon, then dinner, and one at night, and then who knows, supper, drinking, all that kind of thing. <laughs> it is, of course, dedicated to Charles, with whom everything is possible. I'm going to leave you with a white snake, and I hope to see you at the opera in 2016. Thank you.